Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope. My intention today in this weekly channeling video is to bring in a wonderful inspired afterlife spirit. Her name is Louise Hay. Perhaps you know her. She is the founder of Hay House Publishing Company and has been a philanthropist and such an advocate for developing our spirit, connecting to our intuition and really for healing. So, such a powerful stand for self-healing and awareness. And it is my pleasure to connect with her in the afterlife and share our conversation with you. Today we have a topic focus. So we are going to be talking about spirit guides. So let's welcome in the energy from the afterlife of Louise Hay. Hello, she says, hello dear, is what she says. Um, I love working with you, Louise, I always do. You're such a joy. You have such a compassionate energy. I just wanna smile and I wanna cry and I just feel good <laughs> connecting with you. It's interesting for those of you who are watching, I, I really respected her in human life and human terms, but I didn't resonate with a lot of her teachings and a lot of her healing work that she did on self-love, self-care, self-healing. I didn't, I wasn't really drawn to at the time uh, during her lifetime. And yet I had, I felt like I had this um, incredible, uh, uh, as though she was sort of a mentor for me, even though it wasn't in my healing and my spiritual journey, it was actually in the energy of business and advocacy, the way that she created her publishing company. And that backstory is so inspiring to me as a woman and as a woman that works in the psychic and healing arena. It is definitely um, such a, it's a tricky place to have a business and to make your living. And you took something that you believed in and you're so courageous and you just took a stand and you created this publishing company and, and welcomed in many different kinds of diversity and authors and concepts and, and topics, such a wide range of topics. There's literally something for everyone on their spiritual journey at Hay House Publishing now. And that's because of you and your vision. And so I, I respect and admire the vision so much. Okay, I'm gushing. I know some of you are probably annoyed by that, but you know what, too bad. <laughs> I am really, thank you. A lot of gratitude, Luis. A lot of gratitude. And she said, oh. She said it's, there's no other choice. She says it's easy to, do what you believe because there's no other choice what it's what is the alternative <laughs> excellent point hmm thank you for that what is the alternative it's easy to do what you believe in to live what you believe there's no other choice what is the alternative beautiful thank you all right, let's talk about spirit guides. Can you share some of your wonderful insights from the afterlife perspective? Especially interesting because you've been a teacher in human life about spirit, spirit and spirituality and connection and healing. This should be very interesting to hear. What is your um, explanation from your spiritual now as a spirit perspective of spirit guides? What is a spirit guide? He says, a spirit guide can take many forms. It is important to know that because it's possible for you to block the recognition of having a spirit guide. She says, <clears throat> when you step in to this adventure, into a physical form, and you have made that sacred agreement, you come in with an army of healers of helpers, of incredible beings that love you. And their mission throughout your lifetime is to love you, to hold you in love 
and love you through all of the triumphs and the struggles that you will encounter as you experience human life. So a spirit guide is exactly as it sounds. It is spirit, it is energies, multiple energies that support your spirit. Your spirit is guided. Your spirit is guided. The energy of the light of your being is guided. This is what is meant. This is the true, the truest meaning of spirit guide. And then she says, that's not what you were hoping for, is it? <laughs> well, I think that's quite profound. When we are in our human context now, if you could shift into, try to recall, Luis, what it was like to be a person in a body with an ego mind. We're dealing with an ego mind. And in this context, meaning and definition is very important for us to help us truly allow our spirit to be guided. We've got to understand what spirit guide is. We personify it. We make it into a person. Is, is it that our our spirit guide, do we have a person, a, a one energy representative that just stays with us, helps to guide us? Is there one? Because spirit guide for many is one a person or an energy. Spirit guide, it kind of sounds like a singular thing. So is that true? Is, does that exist? The way our mind, our mind in human form defines it. Can you explain that? Yes, yes, it does exist. Your reality is yours to create. It is true what you have said previous. You co-create your life experience. I know it is hard to understand all the concepts and principles. It does seem quite complicated. It rather is for the mind, but it simply is. It is all energy. So whether your mind needs to consider the idea of one, sort of like a bodyguard of sorts, indeed, that may be what is reality and true for you. In whatever form you need, that is how your spirit will be guided. I am not in a position to say there is one. For me, when I was in body, Ah, my memory. Ah, yes, the physical body. Hmm. There is a lot of matter there, a lot of mass to move through. And she's showing me like I see images of like lasers trying to cut through big chunks of boulders and rocks, like on the side of a mountain. Like that's what she's showing me, the representation of how what it's like to live in a body and how, how it is to try to get spiritual information like the laser beam cutting through huge boulders of rocks. So she's remembering, identifying with us. <laughs> Good image. <laughs> that's very accurate, doesn't it feel? For those who are watching, very accurate. I recall I have had many guides on my human journey and they varied in the expression from animals in powerful spirit totems, shaman, is, shaman guide energy, which are definitely people in form. Something your mind can relate to, that is a very good point. Something your mind can relate to which is why it does feel, indeed, it does feel important to learn about the different types of spiritual aids, spiritual assistants, spiritual advisors, as in, I'm not simply speaking of the religious-based or the secular-based identities, icons, or deities. I am speaking of the vast variety of the way, the many, many ways that your spirit is guided through what you would classify as individuals or people-like forms. There are many, many from so many 
beautiful customs and cultures and lineages that you have experienced and multiple lifetimes that you have lived indeed. And it would make sense. And as I am in the state of the ego mind and connecting to ego mind and mentality perception, human perception of spirit guide, it does definitely make sense. It is quite rational and realistic to approach spirit guide in this way and to allow yourself, for example, to work with archangels to, as Bridget does, to be, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I'm sorry, Louise, my throat's a little, ah, it's the body clearing. <laughs> she says, it's the body, no need to apologize for what the body does. The body does what the body needs, Bridget. <laughs> Indeed, you are such a, we should talk about body, energy and body and all, that. oh, there's so much we could talk about, Louise. Let's focus on the spirit guide though. Bridget will not get distracted, I will try not to get distracted. So, so please, please continue. As I was saying, I was using the example of you, Bridget, as Archangel Michael is one of your many, many advocates. He most certainly loves and adores you and he has been with you all along, even before you were able to see or sense him. He has always been there for you. In fact, it's quite interesting how that story unfolds, isn't it? Hmm. Yes, <laughs> I'll have to tell you guys at Above Life Channel about my story about meeting my guide for the first time and knowing that it was, um, recognizing that Archangel Michael was an angel because I didn't know that when I first connected with him. I was new to all this stuff, I didn't know. And it's okay to not know and understand all of these concepts. They are, Luis is right, it can be quite, it can seem quite complicated, quite daunting and overwhelming. So she says, it is quite sensible to conceive a spirit guide as a person or in the likeness of a human, human being it may be more palatable to the mind to allow for that. And yes, that is the case. I had many guides in my lifetime. Mother Mary was one of my dear, dearest guides. And no, to answer the question, I did not have a specific, she says, not Catholic, not in the way of a, a particular faith. But Mother Mary, the Divine Feminine Mother, the love and the compassion that she showered upon me in our connection was such a gift to me and she really saved me. She really saved me. Mother Mary taught me about compassion and about self-love and the importance of self-love as part of healing. She was a wonderful teacher to me. And in this way, she was a spirit guide, the way that you would understand a spirit guide to be. Okay, so can you talk about that? So spirit guides, energy beings that may or may not be in a form. So they may look like a Sherpa guide, a shaman guide, an archangel, an animal, or multiple other different forms of deities like Mother Mary, as you mentioned as one of your lead guides, one of your guides. Um, what are the roles of spirit guides? Because you mentioned Mother Mary teaching you or mentoring you. Is that one of the roles that a spirit guide might play or provide us in our human lifetime? Most certainly. She says most, most certainly. Yes, that is one thing you can definitely count on is learning and growing and there will be teachers that show up to you show up for you to be able to usher you through a a period of time where you are experiencing a lesson or you are learning or discovering something new about yourself about your human life perhaps or about your energy as as you are getting to know yourself as a spirit truly as a spirit so yes many roles mentor as you mentioned teacher friend, 
friend and she's referring to, I refer to, um, sometimes when I'm in session or when I've discussed spirit guides before, this is Bridget talking, I have used the concept of comparing the spirit guide as a best friend for your soul. Oftentimes someone that may have been incarnated previously with you and so you know them really well so you don't recognize really when their energy is with you because it's always been with you. It's very familiar. But if they were to leave or go on another mission or something and then come back, then you would feel like a part of you was missing. You'd feel something missing. So best friend to your soul, that's how I describe it. And then I also describe there's a lead, like one guy that's with us for all, all time. Is that accurate? I mean, is that now, because I am in human form, so I do have limited understanding. And so I only know what I've learned through my ex personal experiences and through my guides and my teams and the contacts, um, the contacts I've had with other spiritual teachers, masters, helpers in sessions with other people. So I've had a lot of different experiences, but that's what I kind of understand that there's one that's a primary kind of a lead. And then there are others that sometimes rotate based on need. Is that an accurate reflection or is there something that you can offer us to explain how that works? She said, there can be one or there can be many. It is simply a choice of the spirit as it is incarnated. And she's saying us, like as a person, like our spirit inside of us, we decide is what she's saying. She says, I have seen some with three up to six, she says, six actual spiritual beings that are guiding the energy through life. So she's not referring to, she's not saying the person. She's never saying us as a person. She's referring to us as an energy being and as a spirit, which I think is really beautiful. That's a form of respect is how it feels to me. She's recognizing you as you are created in the perfect light, love, empowering, inspiring energy that you are. That's how it's coming through. So you've seen three or six, okay. I have seen, um, when I've had session with people, repetitive guides show up over and over and over again, but I've also seen them change out many times as well. So she says, indeed, I believe that there would be, indeed, I believe. Indeed, it's related to the belief what I believe is what is, is what she says. And you look for the experiences to, to affirm that belief. Okay, so because that's how I believe it works, that's what I see. That's what you're telling me? Yes, okay. Wow, interesting. I'm open to learning more about that, to exploring and expanding my perspective as well. And she says, and so you will, you shall, in future experiences that you have as well. And then she says, but for you, there are most certainly a few lead guides. <laughs> she said, there are at least two that I can see, Bridget. Yes, I know, there are at least two. And she says, the reason perhaps, Bridget, that you feel that there is a lead guide is because you are identifying the soul, the spirit of the individual, the soul that's incarnate into a body, you are identifying that as the primary. And perhaps that is why you perceive there is one lead guide. And as well in your, as you have identified, she says, your personal experience with Archangel Michael, and of course, Margaret, in your journey has gifted you with this loving and powerful bond of connection. And she says, it's natural to want that for others. Okay, so it works differently is what I'm hearing you guys. It works differently for depending upon what you believe and then your belief system is solidified. Oh, interesting. Hmm. We look for matches to what we believe. Thank you. I really do appreciate the energy of your presence. It feels so good. Do you guys feel her energy? It's really, it's so gentle. It's so gentle and just very tender. And thank you so much. You feel a lot like Archangel um, Hanel. And I've worked with Hanel in session a lot. She's one of the balancing energies for me when I work with women for Divine Feminine. And so I can really feel that. I can feel that in you. And she's like, that's because we are advocates for one another. 
our spirits are bond. She said they're tied. I'm like, okay, connected. She said our spirits are tied, which is uh, like a link or a connection. But she uses the word tied. Hmm. Wow, you are such an incredible, incredible teacher, Louise. Thank you so much for coming in and bringing this energy of compassion and understanding about spirit guides from the afterlife. This is Bridget at Above Life Channel. You've been watching a conversation about spirit guides with Louise Hay from the afterlife. I hope, I hope that you have felt inspired in your own spirit today and that you are giving yourself the opportunity to really fill yourself up with hope as you are learning here, as you are watching and experiencing the energy of these channeled messages from the afterlife. Remember, the most important thing for you to remember is that this is your life. This is your life. So live it. Live it like the gift that it is. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Elise. So appreciated.